everybody to, to the Future Work Tech Forum 2020. It's an absolute honor um, for, for me to be here as your conference chairman. And I'd like to thank Fard and the BII World team for both for inviting me to, to chair this excellent event, but also for, for putting the event together. I think when they first came up with the idea for this event, which was a, a very relevant event anyway, nobody foresaw how relevant it would become by, by the time we all get together now. And we have an excellent event over the next couple of days. And I want to share some thoughts on on with you. Um, and although we're not in the same place, I would say before we start, make sure that you you fully get involved in everything that this event offers. Um, because we're going to hear some some really great talks from some some really amazing and diverse organizations. Um, but there's also the opportunity to network. And although we might not be in the same place, I think one of the values of events like this is always gaining that diversity of perspective and hearing what other people are doing and connecting with new contacts. So, so make sure you, you make the most of this, of this platform um, in order to do that. But I think, I think this event is a great metaphor for, for 2020, because while we may not all be in Kuala Lumpur together in the same physical location as we, as we expected to be when we first put this event together, um, we, are, we are able to collaborate. We have this tech platform that's allowing us to, to share that virtual space. We, it enables us actually to create new opportunities to bring people together and actually open this event up to a far wider audience. I noticed on the, the poll back in the, back in the, the welcome section um, that, that there are people from all over the world here now. So we're, we're now looking beyond Asia um, into, into this conversation and that allows everybody to contribute. So just a, a quick a quick introduction to me. Um, my background is in the relationship between people, organizations, and work. And that's something that's really come into, into focus this year. Now, I wrote a book a couple of years ago called The Human Workplace. And something that, that's really interested me for some time is this idea of organizations as, as platforms for people to thrive. So my personal research has always been on large and complex organizations. There are startups in the world that are very well written about that do amazing things. And I've actually used a lot of the techniques I've learned to grow my own businesses to, to kind of prove they work and validate them. But for me, the real secret is in the large and complex organizations. Um, because once you get over even a small team of around 50, that's when complexity sets in and it becomes very difficult to create that coherence and culture that drives an organization forward. And those challenges are big. And, and quite often while you hear about startups who are doing amazing things, um, they, they get over-reported and you don't hear about the person who just in their day-to-day -day job did one thing that created you know, a $500 million improvement within a company because that's what they're expected to do and the company's so big. So for me, it's always been really interesting. And I think over the next two days, we're really gonna hear some of those case stories, uh, case studies. So I'm really interested and excited to be part of this. Um, we're gonna have some really great conversations because actually, if we look at organizations as platforms for people to thrive, the background to that is when people thrive, the organization thrives too. So from my research, and, and this is very high level stuff, and, and we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of this through some of the talks we, or through all of the talks we have over the next two days. If you get the right people in the right places, virtual or physical, doing the right things or taking the right actions, that's what it takes to enable the organization to thrive. So if an organization steps back and rethinks itself as a platform to enable people to do their best work, whether that be individually, as teams, collaborating um, across multiple locations around the world, then actually that changes the viewpoint. Um, but it also gives you that focus to understand what do we need to do to enable our specific organization to be its absolute best. And it's funny that this year, the focus has suddenly become on a lot of these themes. Um, up until now, themes like agile working, remote working, flexible working, workplace redesign, we have debates over open plan offices, um, virtual conference calling and things like that, but it's all been a kind of interesting exp exploration up until 2020. We've been innovating by choice. However, due to 2020 and everything that's happened this year, all of a sudden, every single organization, regardless of size or scale, has had this kind of leveler where we have to innovate by necessity. Everybody had to take a decision on how they were going to work suddenly, 
how their teams could come together, um, how you could connect people when all of a sudden not everybody could be in the same location at the same time, rethinking the physical space and looking at the digital tools to bring people together. And while that's exactly what we're doing here in the way this, this event has, has changed and evolved, actually, we've kind of moved on in the last couple of months from this, okay, we have to innovate by necessity. We have no choice to, but to rethink the way we work. And that has a knock-on effect on the relationship between our people, between the organizations, between the work they do, between leadership, and all of these different things. Um, we're now in this kind of examination and embedding period. We have a number of choices for all of our organizations. Do we continue this very rapid momentum to create the future of work because it's being kind of thrust upon us? Do we take that and continue to push it forward? Or do we stand and consolidate and continue to move forward at a slower pace? Or do we want to get things back to how they were as quickly as possible? And there are organizations out there examining that all the time at the moment and looking at it in different ways. And I think the secret is to look at it in a way that is just for your organization. And I think that's, that's really important. But actually, we need to look at it from a holistic point of view. Because when we change the way people work or the location people work in, it changes it changes a lot. There's a lot of knock on effects to the wider organization. And we have this amalgamation of expertise in departments and specialties. So, for example, if you change people's working hours, all of a sudden there's an HR impact because it changes even down to the potential contract people have with the organization, but it changes the way people connect. There's an operations impact because it changes the technology and the tools you need to enable people to do their work. And it changes the real estate and the physical workplace needs because the different spaces you need, the, the amount of space you need all suddenly come into question. So if there's one message, it's that we need to start crossing these divides and stop sitting in silos where all of our specialties are separate and bring this thinking together. And I think events like this are a great opportunity to do that because if your people are working more remotely or more flexibly, then that's a change. You know, there's, there's a change management or a transformation piece that comes with that. It's going to impact leaders, not only the relationship they have with their teams, but their own personal relationship with work and how they conduct their work. It's going to change the way the organization works, even if not every role in your organization can suddenly work flexibly. And we'll come to that in a second. It, it shifts that dynamic. It shifts the relationship. It shifts the responsibility and the trust that the organization needs to place on its people. Um, and P, all of a sudden, people may not be ready to take that responsibility for their time, for the structures they work within, um, and the responsibility for the organization to provide connectivity, the ability to work at home, make sure that people are able to sit in a, in a location safely and well when they may not be in that, that actual organizational workplace. Um, and I think it's really interesting because not everybody can suddenly work remotely. You know, there's there's a lot of media attention about this, but actually we have, and, and these are organizations represented here at this event, and I'm really excited to hear from them. We have airlines. Airlines, yes, they have office staff, but they have ground staff, they have airport staff, they have, they have, they have flight staff, and all of these people are working in locations that that they need to be in. They can't just say, we're not coming to work today because if the pilot isn't in the plane, the plane doesn't take off. And equally with, with manufacturing companies. If there's machinery that has to run at a certain time in a certain location, you can't say to your operatives and, and the factory staff, don't come in today. You can't say to the cleaners, be flexible around the times that, that you work because these things have to happen. And we call this the parameters of the organization. And I think this is a great opportunity, particularly with the information you'll get in the next day or so to really work out what are the parameters we work in? Because if we, we put those in place and we start with absolute freedom, we can really start to rethink how we operate our organization as a platform to enable our people to thrive through having the best possible experience that helps them have their best day at work. Um, innovation, well-being, contribution, productivity, creativity. These are all buzzwords that, that we've been hearing um, over the last couple of years as, as a lot of this conversation started. And right now we're here looking at them. We all need to innovate and all of our organizations need to stay relevant, whether that's how we service our, our customers with the products and services externally, but also internally. How do we stay relevant? How do we offer our people the best platform to do their best work? How do we ensure that we can attract the right people? How do we ensure we provide the right virtual or physical spaces? How do we ensure that we, we lead and we, we offer that 
that right level of of work and, and activity and that people can take responsibility. It's a big it's a big puzzle. And and I think with with events like this, we can start making sense of of those kind of things. I've made it my mission to to explore these themes over the last the last decade now. Um, and I think if I have three pieces of advice for you all um, going into into these next two days, uh, number one, listen and learn, but don't assume that anybody else's case study or the way they've done it is yours. Your organization is individual. It has an individual aim, an individual approach. So learn and adapt ideas for yourself, but don't just take someone else's blueprint and assume it will work for you. Meet, connect, and talk with as many people as possible. Yes, listen to the information that, that we're giving to you, but actually go and talk about it with other people and, and have conversations. And to that and connect with me. I'd love to meet as many of you as possible. Um, and by the end of tomorrow, set yourself a task to leave the event with at least one immediate action to go back to your workplace the next day and start to, to put into place to take some kind of positive action to think about the future of work and workplace in your organization. Um, and as we go, have that open conversation, share things with me. I'd love to hear from you. Reach out, let's talk to each other. And together from taking this kind of information and going back to our workplaces, we will build workplaces that thrive and we will create a positive future for ourselves, our organizations and our workplaces. So on that note, I think it's a really good time for me to, to, pass, to pass things over and to, to introduce you um, to our opening keynote speaker. I'm extremely excited to be able to, to pass back to, to, to somebody who represents some truly valuable insight for 2020, uh, representing the events platinum sponsor, Cisco Systems. Um, I'm gonna hand back to Fad in just a second, um, but it's, it's great for me to, to look to that opening keynote and hand over to, to Ray Melora, who is the Director of Workplace Experience at Cisco Systems, who's gonna be sharing with you some opening perspectives on design, technology, and culture in the workplace of the future. And that covers the breadth of everything I've just mentioned and that we're gonna be looking at over the next two days. So from me, I will see you later. I will say, enjoy this and all the sessions that are coming up today. I'm gonna to come and join you in the audience now and, and enjoy, enjoy Ray's talk. Um, and I'm gonna hand back to, to Fad. Have an excellent day and I'll see you back here later.